good evening everyone uh, today we will be seeing a session on how to migrate an mvc project to xm cloud xm cloud is basically on the headless 10.3 headless <coughs> as xm so uh, myself deptanu viswas i am associate tech lead uh, in horizontal from last one year and you can find my blogging site at deptanu viswas <clears throat> blogs.wordpress.com and you can find my linkedin handle in as mentioned here and for myself i like to help the community as as much as possible from my side and like to learn new things and accept new challenges mm, i would like to hand it over to varun lakshmi for taking on taking you through the ppt thank you yeah good evening everyone um, myself var lakshmi md i am a web developer at horizontal digital uh, i am a sitecore ten certified developer i blog at uh, veinsitecore.wordpress.com i have one, four years of experience and uh, 1.5 years in sitecore this is my linkedin handle you can reach out to me and um, I, i like to contribute to the community and i love to learn new technology and i am proud of myself and i am expertized in sitecore headless xm cloud sxa and i like to have a deeper knowledge on the topic that i come across um i like cooking and also exploring new places and i found my happiness and peacefulness uh, in art and craft this is brief about myself and um, today we have gathered here for the session with an agenda that is mvc and xm cloud um we will talk about what is the difference and um, uh, we will uh, quote about the migration why the migration is needed and why we are migrating to xm cloud specifically with its advantages as we are uh, migrating we should know the normal basics of it so we will be touching the xm cloud basics and the process of migration uh, how we will process from normal mvc website to uh, headless sxc and then to the xm cloud and we will be having a demo of migration uh, where deepun will be giving the demo and we will uh, end up with a beautiful q and a session and uh, let's see how um, mvc and xm cloud differs uh, mvc is basic everybody as we know everyone is a developer they will start the career with the mvc itself most of them who are dot net and then shifted to uh, sitecore i am one among them Uh, so here it is a popular web development architecture that separates the application into three interconnected uh, components like model view and controller uh, the benefit of it is like code reusability and maintainability and there is a separation of concern there is a uh, model view and controller and it shows the clear structure and organization of the components very well and the drawback is like steep learning curve and um, increased development time and also limited flexibility when it comes to xm cloud as it is in cloud uh, based like saas platform for web development that provides a range of features on tools to simplify the uh, development po- process for example if we look at the xm cloud portal itself it gives so much of tools to explore uh, the development process and the fa- uh, benefit is like faster development with the so much of uh, flexibility and scalability and we can easily integrate with the third party services through rest apis and the drawback is limited control over the overlaying infrastructure complete infrastructure is provided by the saas based platform xm cloud itself so it is like limited control to the uh, owners and the potential security risk as every data is uh, controlled by them and vendor lock in sometimes and also we, as a developer we will face the publishing issue but it it will be fixed uh, after few times um let's see what is a basic uh, migration means as we know like animals and humans also migrate from one place to another place for the benefit of the uh, new things over a uh, period of time uh, for example in information technology the term migration refers to the process which converts data processing or information system to different technology here we are migrating like mvc to xm cloud uh, let's see what the challenges that we will face integration with the existing system and application data migration and uh, transformation from mvc to xm cloud format is a big challenge as we will be having so much of data and content management in the um, sitecore cms 
and then the training and onboarding of the staff on the new platform as it is a uh, very new most of them doesn't know how xm cloud works so this will be a bit challenging so for that we will be having a solutions as well like um, conduct the thorough analysis of the existing system and application for example if a um, website is mvc or uh, with sxc or without sxc you should categorize it and potentially integrate the issues and development should be done after the planning to address them then uh, utilize data migration tools for example you can use the razel tool which is very helpful for uh, migration of the uh, content and also uh, technology to issue the seamless transition of the data from mvc to xm cloud and provide a comprehensive training for the staffs so that uh, the truth uh, smooth transmission of uh, new platform will be easy let's see like why xm cloud that we are uh, as a buzzword we are taking it uh, before jumping to the xm cloud we should know about the monolithic and composable what does the difference is monolithic is a cms uh, uh, like it is a traditional cms in which the front end and back end layers are coupled and the problem with this is cannot adopt to the quick changes and developer restrictions and limited scalability and one or the other day we have to go for the replatforming so um, the composable dxp is a digital experience platform that provide total control over uh, software stacks and it is omni channel the main use of is uh, it is uh, because of the omni channel we can connect multiple channels using api for example if you have an xm cloud you can connect with uh, sitecore search sitecore um, um, send sitecore connect and also you can uh, use um, sitecore cdp for personalization many more multiple tools you can use because of its omni channel nature and it is a future proof architecture then faster to the market and build as needed for example if you want a search integration you can use the sitecore search so you can build according to your needs and if you want a cdp or just a personalization you can go with it so i would like to say like uh, composability is a state of mind that emphasizes flexibility modularity and scalability so once we know the composable architecture let's see about um, uh, on premise eas pass and sas uh, i just want to briefly explain about the um, all these four things that is like on premise is all by yours for example you should have the application data runtime middleware os and also virtualization servers storage networking everything will be yours uh, but for the yas as in like information um, as a service where you will be having you can manage only application data runtime middleware and so on uh, os but in platform as a service you will be knowing the coding but you just need an infrastructure and platform and uh, software as a service you don't need to manage anything everything will be provided by the software itself um i just want to ask anybody of you i just want to give some live example so can anybody tell which is your favorite uh, food anyone which is your favorite dish i'll go chicken curry okay let me uh, take an live example of a chicken curry uh, here what the uh, people will do if they want a chicken curry they will prepare themselves for example with the stove and uh, uh, curry um, masala and also chicken they have to have their own um, like they have to cultivate it and then use it that is like on premise they will be having everything by themselves so a uh, few people doesn't cultivate chicken they will bring the chicken and they will use the utensils and masala everything and prepare themselves that is eas and pas is you just have um, like you will take only chicken uh, from the outside and also utensils from the outside you will be having the um, stove also from the outside and you just have your own masala and you just cook it that is pas so sas is like you don't want anything from your side you will just order it from swiggy or zomato and you will eat it that is the saas based platform is just a live example so that uh, it is easy to connect and understand these things so uh, let's see the key composable benefit uh, what it provides that is agility and speed to market 
as i said it is like saas based platform eliminates the need of the cost and uh, time consuming upgrades and reduce the ongoing maintenance cost as well so it is better to go for the composable thing and then uh, freedom and flexibility like more than 60% of the site core xp clients do not make use of uh, analytics and personalization and testing capability for example if even though they have the cdp in them they do not use the maximum uh, cdp things like personalization in the site core portal itself you will be getting the personalization embedded and so that you can explore to the maximum so we will get the flexibility of it and also you can have a creative and innovation like we will be having back end and front end completely separated for ultimate uh, flexibility in presentation for example you will be having an ui to change the color for example you want both black and white color of the font color you don't need to go and change the code if you are coded in the proper way in the front end you just need to have a back end where site core will be having the checkbox or something so that you just click on one click a content uh, author can change from black color to white color so uh, it shows the creativity and innovation due to the separation of front end and back end and cost effectiveness uh because of the modular nature of the composable solution uh it allows you to deploy or swap the individual pcbs independently so it will be reducing the ownership cost and also reduce the risk uh so why xm cloud matters is all because of the saas based platform composable benefits that is blazing performance enterprise content simplicity for the marketers and uh, exceptional freedom because of the choice of the tool you can integrate and uh, cloud deployment modules and uh, agility for the developers and also like superior resilience we will be having front end and powerful devops tools also and cost effectiveness reduces the back end infrastructure and it management cost and global scalability for example auto scale to the uh, meet global traffic demands is already integrated so as we are talking so much of xm cloud xm cloud we should know the basic of it let's see basic of xm cloud uh, the first thing first is we should have a docker to work with xm cloud you must use the docker for the local development sitecore provides a starter kit as well uh, the starter kit is available in this link i have provided that is uh, sitecore labs slash xm cloud foundation head uh, you can download the starter kit from here and uh, out of the box we will be getting the editing host Uh, here the xm cloud connects with the out of the box editing host to provide all authorizing uh, experience for example preview experience editor and also pages and uh, sitecore cli uh, you, you will be having a sitecore cli using that you can deploy to the xm cloud uh, instance and xm cloud instance uh, everybody will be having what's the difference between xm cloud instance and xm cloud headless what is the difference uh, xm cloud uses headless paradigm that's why we don't use any cd servers uh, instead you will be getting the out of the box experience experience edge it is already pre configured and connected with the starter kit itself you can get it and where uh, you are publishing content and the layout will be residing in the experience edge itself so this uh, front end will fetch the uh, experience edge data through graphql and uh, even like xm cloud provides the like webhook functionality to integrate with other systems also and we can use c sharp or dot net and uh, you can also have the json components and this um, cms also uh, like xm cloud comes with a few new tools to elevate the customers experience for example component builders pages xm cloud deploy explorer etc and i will be covering in the next and you can um, like uh, deploy through the versal app so this is the basic uh, of the xm cloud architecture you should know before jumping to the xm cloud uh, here this is the portal xm cloud portal is the um, like strongest thing that they have released here we will be having the composable dxp management a single portal for easy launching solution across the composable dxp as a partner or a customer and here there will be a centralized use collaboration for example you you can create like five solutions five projects in an uh, a portal and you can invite developers as many developers as you want or marketers or creators with product 
and environment specific access for example if you want to give only access to the dev you can give to the developers and if you want to give um access for more than like um, production you can give a developer um, as a product uh, access for the production or any other um, thing that you will create as an environment so you will be having that specifications for access and personalized experience as i said there is an uh, uh, composable experience personalized with a daily activity for example if you want to use as an uh, content editor a uh, content author cannot go to uh, see the personalization in the um, like uh, experience editor or something they can easily see through the portal how the personalized um, pages looks like in the portal itself so this is the dashboard where you can create the basic site you can select basic site or empty site according to your choice and uh, this is the site core page uh, the page is like built pixel perfect for the front end experience for any user interface with your data and your components you can you you will be having here the components like hero component or promo component everything will be built and you can just drag and drop them to build once and use anywhere or everywhere you want in your application and uh, composable by the design like it has the combined uh, uh, templates components static content dynamic content and media together in one place uh, it is easy for the content author to get these things in the one page itself so this is how the site core explorer look like and you can explore it uh, as much as you need when you are having the good license and this is the site core components uh, here you will be having uh, this this is a component builder where we will be having the components and uh, this is the hero product uh, highlight banner newsletter there, there are sample components that you can drag and drop to your pages and this is the team builder and the data connection and also settings will be provided in the portal dashboard itself and this is the embedded personalization you can change according to the tablet desktop mode or mobile mode here and you can see how the personalization is looking like so getting started with xm cloud we sh should have some prerequisites a valid sitecore license file is uh, always a need a must have and uh, windows powershell 5.1 and also the current uh, long term support that is node version and also um, .NET Core SDK 6.0 and above, and also .NET Framework 4.8 SDK and Visual Studio 2022, Docker for the Windows, and uh, there should be a uh, container enabled Windows. This is very important to make your Docker up and running, and uh, any required components for using Sitecore containers and your own or personal or um, GitHub account, and also access to your own XM cloud instance. So we will be uh, showing like uh, configure your XM cloud environment. You should have some knowledge about this before jumping to XM cloud and uh, set up your local repository, prepare the Docker environment and uh, site core content serialization, serialize the item, how to serialize item and export experience it does support should be having with the uh, starter kit itself. So the process for migration is uh, here we will be having the MVC site and that MVC site will be converted with the headless package uh, installed and you will convert this to uh, headless SXA and this headless SXA is deployed to the XM cloud where you will be doing all the PowerShell script to change it to the JSON rendering. Here we will be having the controller rendering that will be converted to the JSON rendering. And then you will deploy to the Versal app after conversion and all uh, with the proper layout service and the configurations. And then it will be having an XM Cloud site. Uh, here we have the MVC project. Uh, you can go to the GitHub account uh, here. Uh, this is Nivarlakshmi MD and uh, Bangalore MVC. Uh, we have three, configured three pages uh, like home page and uh, speaker page and the venue page and we have the promo component and also hero component these are the cards and also the venue page uh, this is the basic mvc project that we have already created 
and this uh, you, if you want to migrate you can download the mbc project from this link and you can practice and let's uh, jump for the demo of the migration i just want to ask uh, debu to continue thanks sir lakshmi do i make the presenter then the panel yes yes Okay, so let me share my screen. <clears throat> Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. So this is a portal which uh, our Lakshmi has uh, mentioned. Okay. No, oh, just a moment. Is anyone else? Reshare it. Uh, now, are you able to see your screen? Yeah, it's come up now. Yes. No. Okay. So as you can see, this is the portal uh, which Varlakshmi was talking about. So first of all, I'll create one uh, new uh, environment, uh, new application of XM Cloud instance. So first of all, we need to go to this XM Cloud Deploy app. and it's pretty easy just we need to create a project here and i will be using a starter kit foundation uh, from xm cloud and go next next and let me give it as xmc um, s u g m u m number next okay continue with github and I'll use my <coughs> GitHub repo. And next, I can give it the name of uh, a repository name. Maybe I'll give it SUGMUM. This will create a new repository. An environment is dev. I don't want it to be my uh, production. And this is the settings where you can auto trigger a de deployment when you merge uh, your code to your main branch this will auto trigger a deployment so if i create and deploy so this um, process will take around 15 minutes to complete so meanwhile what i'll do i'll show you in my local how to migrate the, all the data because of the time crunch let it run in the background <clears throat> so here we have had an MVC SXS site. Yeah, uh, so we had an <coughs> yeah, MVC SXS site where you can see. So what we have done for due to the time crunch, we have just moved the pages, home, uh, speakers, and venue and the data here but you can still see the mm, renderings and the templates are seen so in the renderings we have the controller rendering as we will be having in uh, normal mvc projects so you can see the template is then controller rendering so what we have done to convert this into a json rendering we have created a partial script uh, so if i once we'll just run this script So if you see, this is already converted into a JSON rendering, and we have the component name also here. So what we have done in JSON rendering, we have to, in or in Next.js or React, we'll have to map this in the um, Visual Studio. So we have our hero and header, all this mapped. Previously, we have done the code, and just converted the code due to the time crunch. <laughs> and also there is one more important thing which uh, differs from an mvc project point of view uh, in a headless point of view is like the template fields should ha not have any spaces in between them and like this company space name this will not work in the react application so fields should always be without space 
<coughs> and uh, to the convention is to create it as a Pascal casing. So again, for that we have created one more partial script, and we'll just convert these fields. Okay, so if you can see, all of my <coughs> fields have been changed, and the spaces are uh, removed. So now what we will do is like we'll have to pull all these items from our local to and deploy into XM Cloud instance. So for that, uh, in XM Cloud, it is already pre-configured with CLI, Sitecore CLI. Uh, it's kind of it's a tool to migrate uh, data uh, content data like TDS. It um, it's a different tool, uh, CLI. So this is the command which will be pulling from local instance. So I'll just pull all the data from here. Uh, from my local instance to uh, the code uh, code level. So if you, if I come here, I will have uh, get changes. You can see all my items have come here. Well, I'll just have to <coughs> uh, check in these changes and we'll deploy it uh, in our XM Cloud. So I don't want this. Okay. So let me see. Maybe I'll <coughs> add it as uh, initial uh, items. Let me commit. Yeah, so I have pushed. Let me open the kit. Uh, yeah, so I'll raise a pull request. Uh, compare and pull. Create a pull request. <laughs> Match it. Confirm. So once this has merged, I had shown you. Uh, so let me go to this project. This project is uh, kind of connected with this submim one. So you can see here in the dev environment, there will be a deployment triggered. So uh, this will also take like 15 minutes and I can show you the Versa app which will be auto pulled after this deployment is completed. So meanwhile, what I can show you is, uh, uh, let me show you the um, different uh, UIs or different SaaS apps. So from here, we can go to pages. So pages will be looking like this. <coughs> From here, you can, if you have a multi site approach, you can uh, select the site from here and the locales from here. <coughs> okay, so here about page, if you see. So, this is how the pages will work. And you can select the templates, create a partial design or a page design. And also, what you can do, you can just uh, see the components what are the components here you can check all the components will be, will be listed here and the explorer is basically a content editor uh, tree where you can see all the items of your um, content from the content editor uh, and you can edit those items so this this ui is basically who is not familiar with the site code tree structure. It's a uh, <clears throat> for the marketers they have created this UI uh, to make it easier and more interactive. So let's go to the deploy. So, um, go to this.
so yeah this deployment is completed so i can show you now So as you can see, our uh, <coughs> SUG Mumbai uh, application has been pulled up. So let me open this app. And you can see the con content editor now. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a fresh instance which I've been pulled uh, uh, once I have uh, created that application. Also, I wanted to show, uh, let me see in the Git, there will be one application which will be created from the latest starter Git. If you go to the repositories, I have this updated eight minutes. So it will be created as a private only repository and this it will have the initial everything like uh, the initial setup of the starter Git of XM Cloud solution. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to pull up an environment for uh, this project, like every environment will be, every project will be having at least three environments like dev, UAT, and uh, production minimum. Two. So here also we have a three environment concept only. So once I create one project, I can go inside that project, just create environment, I can name it as UAT. Sorry, I can name it as UAT, and it will not be my production branch. And I can, <clears throat> if I create a branch here called, first let me create a branch here called uh, this one. Sorry, code branches, new branch. I'll create from main and name it as UAT and create new branch. So if I come here, create an environment, name it as UAT, and I'll just let me reload this page once. <coughs> You can see the UAT has already. So this link is already automatic till it done. So I'll just uh, deploy it as a UAT and I'll not trigger an auto push. So once you're merging to UAT, it will not be pushing automatically. You'll have to deploy it from here. This deploy portal. Uh, actually, there is some video lagging. Uh, I think you need to go a little bit slow. Okay. Mm, is it fine now? Is, is it showing my deploy app? Now, no, now it is showing create environment. Yeah, okay. deploy app. Okay, I will delete, try to delete this environment and then again show you. Now uh, just uh, let it complete. Okay, let's see this one. So this deployment is complete. So now we can uh, check the Vercel app for the SUG me. If we can go to this Vercel app. You can see my, uh, if you remember the MVC screenshots, my site is up now with the same uh, contents. So I can go to the speakers page and the venues page. So this is basically the migration of the 
<coughs> website which we we had done and i will show here uh, the second environment which we have pulled up is will be here again so and this is the mm, two environment which we have pulled up for the new newly created app i so that's it that's it from our point of uh, presentation uh, i would like to take questions now i'll just stop sharing thank you so much if any, any question. questions uh, feel free to unmute yourself I think we're good for now then. Um, so if, uh, are we done with the session then, uh, Lakshmi and Devdanu, both of you? Was there yeah, any yes, if we... Uh... Go ahead, Pat Yes, it is almost done. Uh, we have completed the migration. The, uh, the live demo we didn't took as uh, we done in Sub Bangalore is right. because we already completed most of the process. Uh, so um, I think any extra questions that they want or is any doubt they have in the bit between, they can ask. And again, if they want to uh, get the demo, we can show it like what we have done so far. OK, if anyone if it is not any, clear. Yeah, has any requests or any questions, just feel free to unmute yourself right now. Otherwise, I think we are good to wrap then, if there isn't anything. Yeah, uh, so with this side. So XX, like XM Cloud comes with the, with uh, XXC sites, right? So like any any idea why didn't they, they like provide it without XXC base? XM Cloud comes with headless SXA. Uh, yeah, headless SXA. Yeah. So we have converted this into headless SXA first, and then we have deployed it into my uh, site, XM Cloud. <clears throat> because okay. XM Cloud only uses the experience edge, and with the experience edge, it will be connected through GraphQL only. <clears throat> so you cannot have a normal SXS site or a normal MVC site in the XM cloud. So you'll always have to convert it into as an headless application and then deploy it into say, uh, cloud, XM cloud. Okay. So experience age is a, like uh, a URL or something like that? Can you show that experience or is just some virtual thing? So experience edge um, site course basically the there is there will be no web DB like previously what happens in uh, <clears throat> site code XM or XP or on premise you will have your web database right. So now yeah. there is no concept of a CD server or a web database. You you'll have to uh, publish everything to your experience edge database. It's a cloud uh, site core managed cloud. You cannot see the data there. What only you can see is like you can query uh, through GraphQL, and then you can see whether your data is coming or not. I can show you that. Uh, just let me share my screen once again. So how you will be seeing your data in experience it, right? <clears throat> So this is the GraphQL playground URL. Um, you can just later um, hit this URL and check. So this is basically the playground. And you will have an API key to connect to your GraphQL, uh, I'm sorry, experience edge. So how you can find this API key, just go to your site core sites. Here you have the settings. Sorry, I'm just pulling in the wrong one. This one. Open that.
so you can see your our site is listed here go to settings developer settings and here we will be having that same api key so if you see this m1p this will be our api key which i have connected it here okay so with this api key um, i have connected my experience edge to this playground and if you see this query uh, my site name is this one the root path is the home page if i hit a play you'll be able to see the data <clears throat> so layout service data will be shown here so as per site core context item this is the site name page state and language and if you want to see the route value the fields basically what are the in this placeholders you will be able to see <coughs> in the header or placeholder i have my header component okay and the, let me show you the main placeholder have the hero component and then the title block component and the promo component and in the footer we have the site footer but it is showing as partial design because this is coming from the sxa partial design concept partial design and page design you can see here inside that balance we have footer and inside that we have our component called footer component <coughs> So basically, this is the layout service data you can see from this uh, edge. So you cannot directly see your items there uh, to answer your question, uh, but you'll have to always do a GraphQL query to see what is the response you get. Okay. <coughs> and so what that... are the yeah debugging techniques? Like, see now we are like do like. If you can suggest, like, what are the ways we debug these type of application now? Like, uh, let's say if I'm not setting the correct data here, and then, uh, like, what what are the ways I can, I can try? Uh, first of all, uh, you'll have to do a publishing of your site, which will clear all the cache from uh, site core experience edge. So, most important thing is publish, republish the site item, which will invalidate the cache here. Uh, uh, like in the experience age. there will be a caching issue sometime most issues will be uh, resolved through caching issue or else you'll have to see the layout service response here and compare your layout service response in the uh, seam and edge and you can uh, <clears throat> know there will be a faulty uh, thing like faulty data if it's coming or not and uh, from in some point of time you'll have to compare versal and this edge also so there will be sometimes this versal app will not show the proper data but you will be able to see in experience edge the data is proper then time you'll have to select and see um, versal's deployment uh, um, logs and versal cache and versal settings basically you'll have to see Okay. Frank, any other questions? Anything else? No, I'm good. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Um.